Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. Today, an equipment autopsy uh, that kind of ties in with a big series of videos that we're shooting right now on magnetic media and all that jazz. Um, we're doing a whole thing on reel-to-reels and that. And in doing all the research on reel-to-reels, I've gotten to learn a lot about cassettes. So I figured it'd be kind of cool to do an equipment autopsy on cassette tapes and just show you guys the parts inside, especially since a lot of people out there, especially in the current generation, really don't know all that much about tape. So I figured we'd take a couple apart, look at them, check it out. And I've got a, uh, a regular Philips compact cassette. So when most people think of like, you know, putting something on tape, this is what they think of. This is a, a Philips compact cassette, is the classic of music through the 80s, just audio tape. Not the first cassette tape, by the way. RCA had one out years before. Then I've got a uh, Betacam SP tape. Looks like that. And this is a professional video cassette. Um, almost everything used in broadcast video is done on Betacam. Back when they used tape. And then the pinnacle, the high, holy, mighty standard. That is, here I'll let you get a good close up. That is a U-Matic tape. And this is a professional broadcast video cassette and was the standard for decades. This is, you've watched a lot of television shows off of one of these and not realized it, but at the radio, at, at the TV station, that's what they were playing it off of, big umatic tapes. So let's take time and go through each one of these and have a look inside and talk about how tape is made. First off, this one I have, because this is brand new, I actually, this, People talk about these as obsolete technology. I, I just bought this less than 20 minutes ago at the local Walgreens for like eight bucks gets you a big pack of them, big five pack. So they, they come like this and you can still get them. They're, they're not hard to find. Walgreens on a corner had it. You'll see them at gas stations and stuff all the time. So it comes in a case and it comes, here's your technical term. This inside is called the J card. So that's, that's a J card. And you can write this stuff on there. And it's got labels, because stickers are always fun. And the stickers go on a thing in specific spots. I haven't done this in a million years, but we'll show you guys where the stickers go. Just because I can. Stickers go right there. That's your spot for the stickers. I'm not actually going to put on there, because I want to be able to show you inside. But that's, that's where your stickers go. And it comes with an extra sticker that just says Max L for no particular reason. I'm going to put that on my laptop. You need to come with like dinosaur stickers. That'd be cool. All right, let's grab a tool. Going to need about that. That might be a bit big. Let's go to that. Okay, I'm using a number zero Phillips, which really fits good. All right, now I'm just going to take off the outer cover. which is in two halves. Now, if you get pre-recorded cassettes, because that was how most people got them, was they'd come with music on them already. They don't have screws. They're just clipped together because it was easier to manufacture that way. This is a big difference, because here we've got Christmas favorites with Bing Crosby. Now, if you look at the difference, this is a pre-recorded cassette. And the quality of the cassette's a lot lower because this is designed to be recorded on like 50 different times. And this, you'll notice there's no screw holes or anything. It's, it's a lot lower quality. The, mechanically, it's pretty much the same thing, but just the build quality isn't as good. This is a modern day cassette. I've taken the screws out. Now let's get a look inside and we'll talk about the parts. The big thing with having the screws on it means that you can take it apart and work on it. So if you've got if you've got your tape of Bing here and the tape deck eats your tape, which happens, that, that was a problem, and it eats your tape, you could actually take what's left of the tape out, cut it up, splice it into here, and save your tape and still have Bing in a new case. So that's, that's a big advantage to buying the ones like this. So inside the cover, the first thing you'll find, and they're clear here, so it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the difference in reflection and the light, is the slip sheet. And this is actually a bearing. It's, it's a sheet of very thin plastic. And this is a bearing surface against the inner edge. Now the inner edge, they already, they've done some things here. There's, there's things happening that aren't immediately obvious, okay? 
You'll notice as we move this around, there's these rings, which are guides to keep the spools locked in place. Then there's these here, which are like bearing plates, and these keep the spools centered laterally. And then there's the slip sheet that the spools actually slide against, and this keeps everything at a, as low a friction as possible. All right, so we're going to start with the, the big stuff here. That's the supply reel, which is always on the left. That's the take-up reel, which is always on the right. And if you flip the tape around, they just reverse duties. But whatever reel is on the left is a supply reel. Whatever reel is on the right is a take-up reel. Down here are the guide rollers. And the job of these is to keep the tape centered as it's, as it's being played. They keep the tape centered in the tape channel. And then there's this right here, which is the pressure pad. And usually, up behind here, this cassette doesn't have one, but there will be a little metal bar, which is the magnetic shield. I think in this instance, this is pretty much doing double duty. But that is used as the pressure pad. This holds the cassette in contact with the heads. When you load it into a tape player and it pushes up through, it's pushing against the pressure pad. That's right where the heads go. And then there's holes, and you can see it here and here. And they're on both sides. When you put this in the tape player, this is where the capstan goes through. It goes right through this hole right here. And that'll be where the capstan is. And then the pinch roller will come up from the bottom. So if you have a cassette player, the capstan turning here controls your speed that the tape plays. And the pinch roller comes up below and pushes, a, pushes the tape against the capstan, and that locks it in for speed. So that's, that's what moves the tape and everything. Now, here's some other stuff. Let's, let's start taking some things apart. First off, there's a lot of tape on this reel. I could be wrong, but I want to say it's something like 1,800 feet. It's a lot. It's, it's lots and lots of feet. Um, I might be totally off on that. Now, here is the beginning of the tape. This is the splice right there. And before that is this clear tape, and that's the leader tape. And that right there is for certain types of tape decks and machinery stuff to let it know that it goes this way. Um, there are auto reverse tape decks. You can get tape decks where you just put the tape in, and it'll play to the end, and then it'll stop. The heads will drop, spin around, and come back up, and it'll play the other side of the tape. So you don't have to take the tape out and play it. But we need to get rid of all this tape. I haven't done this since I was a kid. Watch this. Here's your cheat. I need, need a better tool. I used to do this with a pencil. I wonder if you'll work. That might work. Is that big enough? Hmm. To take the tape off, you just hold it up like that and it'll unpack all of the tape onto your table. It takes a few minutes, and we're not going to sit here and wait for this to go, but yeah, that's, that's how you unload. And the, the higher up you get, the, more, the faster this will go. I really should try this down the, uh, down the big stairway. That could be kind of fun, see how fast this will go. You can have all kinds of fun with tape. When you deal with uh, big studio tape, you don't notice it with yeah, you don't notice it with uh, little tape like this, but with big studio tape, it has a very distinctive smell to it when you unpack it on. I always used to like the smell. So we'll take this out. We're going to take our leader out this side, and we'll just break it at the splice. We'll set that aside. Take our leader out this side, and break it at the splice. And we can get rid of this mess. As far as bang for the buck, fastest possible ways to make the biggest possible mess. There are very few things in the world that compete with tape, like cassette tape, because you just, you just get it going and you've got a mess and it's awesome. And you can take this and make a whole bunch of people really crazy. I just go like that. Send it right up to the camera guy. Okay. All right, so that's, that's inside an audio cassette and we'll take out the guy. Ah, I wanted to show you this real quick. Here's how you fix a tape. Let's say you've got a uh, broken tape and you want to save it. 
I'm going to have to get on the macro cam so you guys can see this. But if you look at these, here, let's zoom way in. OK, that's one of the rollers, or one of the reels. And you can see there's this little bit here. Well, that clips into place. It's just held in with pressure, and it smushes the tape in there. So we're going to take that and just slide it out. And here, I'll show you on this one. If you just slide it off to the side, it comes right out. You can take the tape out. So if you're repairing a tape, you have your other piece of tape, and you have it all spooled up. And you just take the tape. Make sure it's lined up right. OK. You just lay that in there like that. I haven't done this in a million years. And you can just push it in and clip it in place. And then trim off your excess. They're always ugly, but that's, that's how it looks like there with the new leader. So you can take that. Now here's how to thread a cassette. It goes over the little guide pin in the roller there, and then out in the front. And you can roll that on. Goes around the other side. Roll that up a bit. See, and hipster kids all over America now know how to do this right. There's another pin down on this end. You got to go around. It goes outside of this pin, inside of this. This is where your uh, screw goes through. And then you want to have it inside. There will be a groove here. And then some grooves down the front. You got to have it inside all those. It's tricky if you don't, if you haven't done it in a couple decades. So you just line all that up, get it in there, or you can totally cheat. The big thing is to make sure everything's flat because if you, if you have both reels flat and you get a twist in the tape, you're okay because you can always take the twist out. If one of the reels isn't upside down and you put a twist in by design, you're screwed and you'll never get it out. All right, we've got that on there. You want to make sure you go around the thing and out the front. Go around this one and out the front. Put the top on. Now, you don't screw it together. You just hold it like this. And twist that in there. It's weird with so little tape. And then you separate just a tiny bit on the front. You can line the tape in. And there, it's all back together. Then we just put our screws back in. This one's weird. I seem to remember there used to be a screw here at this point. This one doesn't have it, just in four corners. It must be getting cheaper nowadays. OK, so now we know all the basic parts of a cassette, and there's, there's your empty cassette. And this will actually still work and play. You won't hear anything because it's just leader tape. But there's, there's all your basic parts. Supply reel, take up reel, slip plates, outer case, pressure pad, shielding, capstan hole, guide rollers. Those are all your basic parts. So let's set this aside and look at how many of these parts carry over because now we don't have to explain them all. Oh, oh, hang on. There's something i got to point out. This is really important. If you look on the top of the cassette, see this here? Watch this. There's a little plastic window there, but there's like a cavity molded in under it. If I push on this, that breaks. Now that is the right protect tab. 
right now, because it's the top left for whatever side, so it'd be side A, top left, if you put this tape in a deck and press record, nothing would happen because there's a hole here. When you put this in a tape deck, a little feeler switch goes down in here to say, can I record on this tape or not? This tape is write protected. So at this point, you can't record on this tape. If you wanted, if you have a write protected tape and you want to record over it, like, uh, like let's say you decide you hate Bing Crosby. Well, if you look on top of the Bing Crosby tape, your side one, see how those are open? Write protect tabs. If you want to record over this, you put a piece of tape over it, just plain old scotch tape, or fill it with a little tiny piece of paper or whatever you have handy. But right now, you can record on this side because the write protect tab is there. You cannot record on this side because the write protect tab is broken off. So that means you cannot record. So we'll set this also on top. Um, this is, there will be holes on other types of cassette tapes to tell you what type it is, like what the tape is made out of. Type 1 tapes look like this. They only have the right protect tabs, and there are no notches anywhere else on top. Type 2 would have a notch here, right next to the right protect tab, and that's a type 2 tape. And I've never seen a type 3. Type 4 tapes have a notch right here. So if it's a type 4 tape, you'll have a notch here and here and here, and then mirrored on the other side. So this is a type 1 cassette. And if we look on it, hey, look, right down here, type 1. That's IEC type 1. All right, so that's that. Now here is our video cassette. And this has stuff on it from a television station, so I'm not going to show you the top. But we have a little red tab over here. That's the right protect tab. And you can pop that. It'll either push in or out. Ah, these push in. But you can push that down in, and there's your right protect tab. And that does the same thing to make it so that you can't record. Now you can record. Now you can't record. That's the right protect tab. Now, because they're dealing with much larger threading systems, because when you put a cassette tape in your tape player, all of the cassette tape is supposed to stay inside the cassette. None of it actually leaves the cassette. It's the minute it's in there, it's laced and ready to go. It's threaded through all the heads it needs to go through and the capstan and pinch roller and everything. It's just fine. Video cassettes don't work that way because video cassettes are helical scan. So they have to thread way through a machine. And it's really cool. We'll do, a, uh, we'll do an autopsy on a VCR and show you guys how they thread and all that. But the cassette, the videotape in a video cassette, when it goes in a machine, there's a little guide, there's a little pin that pushes in this corner right here, and it opens the front door. You can see the cassette, and then the cassette gets pulled out a lot. Like, it, it comes out, and it goes through a whole thing, and it gets wrapped around a head, and there's guide rolls and all kinds of stuff. It's really intricate. It's a whole clockwork thing. We got all the screws out, right? Yeah, we totally got all the screws out. It's just being fussy. All right. Now look in here. There's so much more to a videotape. Now we've got metal guide roller, plastic guide roller, and there's an R set on this side. And down here, there's these cogs, these, these spring action levers. Now these, if you look at the tape reel, you can see little, they're like sprockets. So when the tape reel is in there, it rides against that lever. And what this does is, if you listen, it's like a ratchet. So the tape can only move in one direction. And these get disengaged when the tape is in a, a deck. But the idea is that if the tape is not in a deck, if you spool the threads or spool the reels, you can only wind tape back into the thing and not take it out. Now you'll notice this tape is half inch tape. But look how thin it is. It's so thin that even on its own, it's starting, it's got a curl to it. So it's, it's crazy thin tape. It's pretty wide, though. It's half inch wide. So for audio tape, this would be the equivalent of eight track tape. But I don't think it would work very well to try and record audio on this. We should try that. I'll set this aside, and we'll make a video with that as an experiment. That could be fun, because I've got a half inch tape deck um, right around the corner, actually, right in the next set. So that's inside a video cassette, and then there's a couple big springs 
to push everything down, and then there's the spring for the door because they have a hatch on the front. So that's a standard Betamax SP or XP or whatever one it is. Now this is a big U-matic. Now here, look, see the big R? Record protect head, or re, uh, the right protect notch, okay? So if you want to decide if you can or cannot record on here, it depends on if there's the big R red button, which is very easy to pop out and you don't need tools to pop it out, and you can replace it with the same button. You can just push it right back in and it locks in place. And this is another one where we've got things that push in the bottom to make it so you can open the door. Um, on the front, there's a notch. You push that down, and then you can open the door. And look here. See how wide it is? It's as wide as my thumb. It's three quarters of an inch. It's huge tape. And there's a little wing up front that makes sure the tape gets pushed out so that when it reaches in and takes it to thread the machine, everything works right. So let's take a look inside. And we're going to find things like guide rollers and pressure pads and probably a sprocket thing. It's the same ideas carried over and over and over across decades. The, the old saying of standing on the shoulders of giants to invent the next big thing is very true. And you see this as you explore technology that the same themes carry on and on and on. I'll take the top off here. Now on our top, we've got these big pressure pads. We've got our door with the spring hinge. We've got our guide pins that keep the rollers in the same spot. Now look at these, they're so much packed in there they actually overlap. And they can do that because when one reel's full, the other reel's empty. And this does, isn't even like a full cassette. They, they use the same size shell and they just load it with different amounts of tapes for different tape lengths. But as we open this up, we can see there really isn't all that much tape in here. This reel's empty, it's just got leader on it. And this reel, which is the full reel, is almost totally empty. There's, there's very little tape on here. How long a tape is this? It doesn't say. Usually they say. And we've got some guide reels and stuff like that up in the front. Our wiper, another wiper here. And then just a little, it's really simple. There isn't a lot to it. And then we've got this really big one inch wide tape, which is huge. You could record 16 tracks of audio on that. And this tape's very thick. This is good, serious tape. The other one was kind of, kind of mincy, but this tape, I would have no compunction about loading that into a reel to reel and trying it out. Problem is we don't have a one inch reel to reel, but if you've got one you want us to play with, get a hold of us because we are desperately looking for a big 16 track one inch reel to reel. That'd be cool. I'm gonna wind this over onto this one. And remember before how we had a little thing that we took out that held the tape in the end? Gerber Ninja Time, let's grab that, pull that little tab out, and that has tape wrapped around it several times. It's got this little pin, and there's the end of the tape, and that holds it on there. So now I've got a whole reel of tape I can play with later on. That's kind of fun. So there you have it. That's a look, just a nice, Chill video, just hanging out, checking out tapes, exploring stuff. But now you know how cassettes work for umatic video cassettes all the way down to little tape cassettes. Thank you guys for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. And if you're interested in exploring science and technology and how things work, check out thegeekgroup.org because there's like 10,000 other guys just like you out there that think this stuff is neat and want to explore it. So come down, get involved. Membership at thegeekgroup.org is for you. You want to check us out. I'm Chris Bowden. You guys have fun. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you.
please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.